What's up, guys? Matt Brown here for thelines.com, playpicks.com. Steven Andrus alongside, and we're going to run through the week six survivor options. Looking down the board here, Steven, one, let's go to last week where we got lucky, but hey, our picks got through, and we'll go ahead and we'll move on, and we'll, we, we will, no pun intended, survive here into week six as we uh, get going. Hey, listen, the beauty of Survivor is you only got to pick a team that wins. Vikings won. It took a 54-yarder as time expired to get that done. But guess what? We're still alive. Yeah, I, I feel for the Lions fans, by the way, who have now lost field go- games on 54 and 66-yard field goals here. Poor Dan the Man Campbell can't get that first win, crying at the podium. It's rough days there out in Detroit, but <laughs> I, I love how much they're fighting. So we did survive with that Vikings pick. I, m- I might go a little more conservative this week, though, just to try and punch the ticket onto Week 7. No, definitely. If you're watching along with us on YouTube, you can see we're here. There's a week six survivor uh, article that we have absolutely free on the site. And of course, uh, it's listed here. And this is going to be an interesting week, guys. It's you can see it right here in front of you. And we'll if you're listening to us on the podcast, look, there's only two big favorites really this week. And so do you want to waste the Rams? And I say waste in air quotes. And do you trust the Colts, and that's really what it comes down to. Uh, looking at the at the odds here, the Colts are nine to ten point favorites over the Houston Texans. Rightfully so, it's the Houston Texans, and then you have the Rams, who are ten and a half point favorites on the road. The New York Giants, of course, the Giants going to be without a handful of players, a handful of key players, I should say, there for them. Stephen, listen, I understand it depends on the size of the pool that you're in. I completely understand that if people don't want to feel good about this pick at all but listen when are you using the Colts ever again in Survivor if you're playing to win I honestly think that there is one play and one play only this week and I think it is Indianapolis Colts at home against the Houston Texans and I know it's going to feel terrible to punch that button I understand it's going to feel terrible to send that email or however you're playing in your pool but this Colts team at home against the Texans I honestly believe it's the only play of the week We're going to talk about it on the Thursday pod, our mega pod each week. I'm curious to get you and Brad Allen's thoughts on a a little sprinkle on Colts to actually win this division, even though they lost that heartbreaker on Monday night. We'll talk more about that tomorrow. I still think this division's wide open with the Titans' flaws on their roster. Um, I, I can't disagree with anything you said. The one thing I'll mention is a lot of teams in your survivor pools likely pick the Rams week one. And if you are not one of those teams, then it is potentially some leverage here to take the Rams this week against Mike Glennon, potentially, if Daniel Jones doesn't pass the concussion protocol. They are on the road, but they're 10 and a half point favorites as we record this right now. So with so many other games not having as big of favorites, potentially some spots for some chaos, that fact to me remains that it is, even though it is chalk, that the fact that teams probably picked the Rams in your pool before this week could actually lead to some leverage for you. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if you want to play the super, super, the super, super, you know, uh, easy way here, and of course, if you have them available, and if you're in a smaller pool also, look, the Rams are certainly this the the much sexier play here going up against the right. Giants. And again, probably without Daniel Jones, probably without Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay, Darius Slayton, Sterling Sheriff. I mean, the list goes on and on. If you are in a bigger pool, the Rams obviously will have more future value for you because they are just a better team in general. The Colts, on the other hand, not much future value for you. I don't think you're going to feel comfortable playing this Colts team really ever. So if you can get them out of the way and play them here against the Texans, I think that's the only real decision you got to make this week. Now, if for whatever reason that you are without either the Rams or the Colts this week, I guess there are a handful of other options for you. You've got the Bucks, the Chiefs, the Bills, the Packers, the Cowboys, and the Steelers. And if you're looking, if you're with us on YouTube, you can kind of see Bucks seven point favorites as we continue to scroll down here. You have the Chiefs that are six and a half or seven point favorites as we continue to scroll down a little bit further. You can see that maybe you want to go the maybe maybe you want to play the Bills. They are six point favorites along the way. Packers, Cowboys, and Steelers are still sitting in that four ish and four ish to five range. Again, I think you want to you want to hold off there, Stephen. Let's just pretend. 
Let's pretend that you don't have the Colts or the Rams at your disposal. What team are you going to play this week out of the Bucks, the Chiefs, and the Bills? Out of the Bucks, the Chiefs, and the Bills this week, I'd probably shy away from the Bucks just on the outside chance that Tom Brady's hand injury is a little worse right. than, than what they're letting on. Um, with the Bills, I think they have a lot of future value. Their schedule's pretty soft here for the rest of the season. So I think, you know, given that the Chiefs have already lost three games, it might scare some people off of Kansas City, but Washington can't stop anybody. Washington is not only blitzing at one of the highest rates in the league, but they're not getting pressure even with that blitzing. And that is a horrendous combination when you're playing the Kansas City Chiefs. So of those three, given given those factors, I think I would take Kansas City this week and hope that some people are scared off from taking them against an inferior opponent. We shouldn't lose sight that Kansas City's three losses have been against good teams. Yeah, I'm with you. Listen, if you're... If for whatever reason you find yourself without the Colts, which let's hope that you still have the Colts here just in week <laughs> six or Survivor, but if for whatever reason of the teams that are that are really and truly options, yeah, I, I'm going Chiefs against Washington as well, as well. That's really the only way that I would go if for whatever reason I didn't have those teams available. Like we said, I mean, yeah, there's the Packers, there's the Cowboys, there's the Steelers, but all of those teams are going to find themselves in much, much more advantageous positions later on in the year. The Packers on the road, you don't want to be doing that. The Cowboys on the road, even though I think the Cowboys Cowboys are super legit and real. You don't want to be doing that, especially in that division they play in. Let's You're talk about the Cowboys. Let's, let's talk about the Steelers, though, Matt, for for a second here. They they are at home and they are catching a backup quarterback in Geno Smith and the Seattle Seahawks, and they play in a very difficult division. On top of that, they still have games left against Kansas City. There's a couple soft spots in the schedule coming up here, but you know, with with the with the chance as the season goes on of Ben Roethlisberger continuing to potentially deteriorate, get more injuries. So they, they looked pretty good last week against Denver, albeit still a one possession game. Do you not like this spot for the Steelers against the backup quarterback and a defense that is struggling mightily? So I guess I, I look at it this way, right? It, again, it comes down to what kind of pool am I in? Yeah. And, and what am I, what am I looking to do? Because this, if there was ever a time, to play the Steelers, it would be this week. I guess I'm almost trying to not have to play the Steelers, yeah. right? But like, if 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 I'm in a pool where, because I mean, like you said, I mean, maybe there is a game against Detroit coming up, so you do have that in your back pocket if you if if you don't play the Steelers this week. And we, you know, look as as good as Detroit has fought this year, they still aren't winning games. So you you would look at least then to play the the Steelers against the Lions and again that is a home game against the Lions so you do have that in your back pocket for November the 14th outside of that you're really not going to play them ever again so like you mentioned as as far as spots go this is the spot outside of Detroit so that would be the only other decision I guess that you would have to make this week do you want to go ahead and burn the Steelers get them out of the way don't have to worry about playing them at again the rest of the year and hopefully go ahead and they get out with a win against a backup quarterback and a really, really bad defense. That's the other thing we should mention. I mean, the Seattle Seahawks defense is, is really, really bad as well. So um, if you found yourself in a very, very big bind, this is the week you'd play the Steelers. I do think it's telling. And this, this Steelers team, despite playing a backup quarterback this week, despite Ben Roethlisberger throwing for more than 10 yards per attempt last week and Najee Harris having more than five yards per carry against a pretty good Denver defense. I think it's pretty telling that the market still has seven teams either as the same level of favorite or heavier favorites than the Steelers are this week. This market is still hesitant to to buy in here to the Steelers, I think, given even with all of these positive attributes after last week and the matchup this week. A couple of three-and-a-half-point favorites you don't want to be playing this week, the Dolphins and the Bengals. Listen, there's just better spots for them down the road. You are not playing the Dolphins or the Bengals this week. So kind of to recap here, guys, again, the two biggest favorites, the Rams and the Colts. Hopefully you you feel comfortable enough to hang on to the Rams for later on in the season. Again, their future value is going to be much, much higher 
than the Colts this week against a bad Texans team. That being said, if for whatever reason you find yourself without the Rams or the Colts coming down, our first option would be the Chiefs on the road. Um, understand it's on the road, but look, all the other big favorites are on the road as well. Our our preference would be the Chiefs on the road against the Washington football team. And then if you find yourself in dire straits, this is about as good a spot as you're going to get the Steelers team. And I understand that it is a Steelers team risk. that you are yes, that you are risk. not that you are not going to feel good about putting your your pick in with the Steelers, but at least there is the uh, Geno Smith factor that is there for the Seattle Seahawks. And so if if you find yourself in a bad spot, we would go the Steelers as well. As Steven mentioned, we will have the Megapod coming at you tomorrow. We're going to break down every single game in the NFL and run through all of our thoughts, all of our bets. Steven, real quick as we get out of here, is there any bet that you already have in your account that you absolutely love here in week number six? Yeah, I, I mentioned this here because we don't really mention Thursday night games on the Megapod because it, most people listen over the weekend and on Fridays. So this Thursday night game, I do like the Bucks as a teaser leg. So mm-hmm. you can get them down through the seven, through the three, basically get them at minus one, minus one and a half, depending on what book you're looking at. So we, we've had a ton of success here, Matt, in the early going, hitting teasers at over 80% those two team six point teasers. So I do like pairing Tampa Bay as a teaser this week, uh, for, for week number six. And, you know, there's a couple of decent options out there that we'll talk more about on the pod, but, um, that is, that is one teaser leg that I definitely like going into week six here. I'm with you. I have, uh, I have the Ravens from Monday night rolling into the bucks minus one on Thursday night. I also, I also have the bucks, opened up with the Chiefs in uh, week number six as well. I think that's what I'm going to play as well. I, I, I love that Bucks chiefs teaser this week. Yeah, so taking the Chiefs down to seven to one as well. Um, so do love that a ton. So guys, if you're if you're listening to this before Thursday Night Football and watching this or on, on YouTube before Thursday Night Football, uh, Bucks chiefs love that teaser, getting both of those down to one point and basically just asking those teams to win again against inferior opponents. Tom Brady said his thumb is going to be perfectly fine. Apparently they laughed whenever they said, is he going to be able to play? So uh, I think we feel pretty comfortable there in the TB12 method and everything, mm-hmm. Stephen. And then, of course, uh, the Chiefs. Chiefs, I think a little undervalued here because of their record and because of what we what we our last our last thought of them, which is getting thrashed by the Bills. But listen, the Bills have a really good offense. They're able to go up and down the field and score on this bad Chiefs defense. The Washington football team does not. And so there is a big, big difference in uh, the Bills and the Washington football team as far as uh, the Kansas City Chiefs. So just don't don't remember the last thing you saw. In this in uh, in this Kansas City Chiefs team, and just think about the opponent here. And this opponent, Stephen, is completely different, completely different animal. Not going to be able to do what the Bills were doing this past week. My philosophy for this year is starting to form for the rest of the season. And one of the biggest things I'm starting to believe is that the top eight to ten teams, and then an ocean, and then the rest mm-hmm. of the league. So Absolutely. I think I, I think the 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 mediocre and the bad teams are so far behind the top eight teams, the top four teams in each conference uh, that we're going to start seeing some bigger and bigger lines here the rest of the season. So that, that applies definitely to the Bucks and the, and the Chiefs this week. Guys, all the content we do is absolutely free over on the lines and play picks. If you're watching us here on YouTube, go ahead and please subscribe to the channel. Everything we do free, like I mentioned, go ahead and give us a thumbs up on this thing and then let us know in the comment section how you're going to play this week, whether it be Survivor, do you like that te- that teaser that we've already talked about, whatever it might be, let us know uh, which team are you do you feel is a trap this week in Survivor as well. Let us know in the comment section. For Steven, I'm Matt. Talk to you guys uh, tomorrow.